Is it wise, would you say, for Washington to say that the time isn't ripe for a ceasefire? To keep throwing weapons into this conflict instead of trying actively to find a diplomatic solution to it? Well, again, uh, the United States has a role to play, but ultimately it's going to be up to Moscow and to Kiev to decide when or if they want to stop fighting. Right now, it doesn't appear that there's a willingness on either side to stop. And um, unfortunately, the war continues. But the fact that the U.S. has warned China not to sell weapons to the Russians, mm -hmm. while we continue to see this huge flow of U.S. weapons to Kiev, isn't there at the very least some hypocrisy here? No, I think that the Ukrainians are clearly the victims of Russian aggression. And so, therefore, it's natural that the United States, and not just the United States, all the European countries are also helping the Ukrainians and the Japanese as well. So I think that there's rather a broad coalition. It's not the United States against China here. This next video that I want you guys to watch will blow your mind. And do not forget to leave us a comment below while watching, okay? Share your thoughts and opinions with us in the comment section below because like always, we value your take on the things we talk about on this show. So. Let's watch. It's double standards. You served in the George W. Bush administration 20 years ago. And this week, we just marked the 20th anniversary of the United States illegal invasion of Iraq. Uh, to what extent would the invasion of Ukraine have happened if the invasion of Iraq hadn't? Well, first of all, um, this is your characterization of the US involvement in the Iraq war, not mine. Um, I'm not sure that, that one has anything to do with the other. I think you're making an argument that there was an erosion of international norms that the United States led with by Iraq, and therefore it follows that Putin had it easier invading Crimea in 2014 and then Ukraine last year. The war wasn't sanctioned by the United Nations. That's correct. That's correct. And neither was Putin's invasion. Neither are, are lots of wars and conflicts all over the world. It doesn't necessarily fall that there's causation between one to the other. But do you agree that the invasion was illegal? Therefore, the fact that there were no consequences might have led us to the situation we're in today. A lot of people have made a link between the two. Um, I just have to pause it there to say something, right? Um, the double standard in America is like so, so crazy. Right. The hypocrisy is like so out of, I don't know, like out of touch, out of everything. They do what they like and they tell the rest of us what we must do. It means it's, it's like we don't matter. Only they matter because they go where they want to go. They invade when they want to invade. And then we are just supposed to sit back and follow whatever they say we should follow. You know, this is what many people have been saying, that the end of American supremacy, it's at hand. It's just a matter of time. Like this prophet in Africa said, when the gods want to destroy a man, they first made him mad. That is exactly what is going on in America right now. That is exactly what America is doing right now. America is like mad. Why do I say that? Because they always use the word, the rule-based order. How we have to listen to the international organizations. How we must follow a rule-based order. But when it comes to them following those rules, they won't. They will do what they like to do, and then they will tell the rest of us to follow the rules. That is just crazy. But let's continue. Well, I think the United States felt that it had a legal justification for going into Iraq. It did not get the second UN resolution that we wanted. Um, uh, again, I think that it's easy to draw analogies between the two, but I don't see them as being similar at all. Is it wise, would you say, for Washington to say that the time isn't ripe for a ceasefire? To keep throwing weapons into this conflict instead of trying actively to find a diplomatic solution to it? Well, again, uh, the United States has a role to play, but ultimately it's going to be up to Moscow and to Kiev 
to decide when or if they want to stop fighting. Right now, it doesn't appear that there's a willingness on either side to stop. And um, unfortunately, the war continues. But the fact that the U.S. has warned China not to sell weapons to the Russians, mm -hmm. while we continue to see this huge flow of U.S. weapons to Kiev, isn't there at the very least some hypocrisy here? No, I think that the Ukrainians are clearly the victims of Russian aggression. And so, therefore, it's natural that the United States, and not just the United States, all the European countries are also helping the Ukrainians and the Japanese as well. So I think that there's rather a broad coalition. It's not the United States against China here. You say there's a broad coalition, but according to a recent survey conducted by the Economist's intelligence unit, support for Russia in the developing world has, af has actually grown. More countries are now siding with Moscow. <laughs> Funny, when these people who just come out to say that we acted on the information we had at the time, and uh, we did what we thought was necessary. Remember, millions of people died, and all you could say is that we did what we thought was necessary, that you acted on what you had at the time. Is that all you could say? <laughs> These people are crazy. <laughs> They are so crazy. They just come out and say, we acted on what information we had at the time. You knew it from day one that everything that you were talking or everything that the whole world was based on was fabricated. You knew it. We all know it now. <laughs> and then you are saying that the United States had a legitimate um, claim to invade other countries or to invade Iraq, where what they said they went to Iraq for was never found. And everyone has disproved them to be liars. And nothing has happened to them, you know, nothing, nothing. Tony Blair is there. George Walker Bush is there. They are all sleeping. Barack Obama is there after invading Libya through the banner of NATO. But he's just there living his life. After so many Libyans have died, after Libyans have been left in the ruins. But mm, nothing happened. With million plus people dead in Iraq, mm, it's okay. Bush, move ahead. 20 years after the war in Iraq, no one has been held accountable for what they did there. No one. We are still dancing, playing the ping pong, kicking the ball back and forth. <laughs> and U.S. still claiming that what they did, they thought was right, or they did what they thought was right. And overthrowing Saddam Hussein was the best thing they could do for the Iraqis. Remember, they, t they said it was for the Iraqis. But I bet you it wasn't. That was the same thing they said, that Removing Mohammed Gaddafi was liberating the local Libyans. But <laughs> my brother, it wasn't. It wasn't for them. They had their reasons for going in, and they did what they thought was best for them to do. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's really, really crazy. And they are not willing to take any accountability for their actions. Could you just imagine if this incident, these atrocities would have been committed by a leader in Africa? Just, just, just let this sing in for a second. That one African country or the leader of one African country did what Bush did in Iraq? Just wrap your head around. Just, just, just let it sing in. Could you imagine what would have happened to that leader by now? Do you think that leader would have been saying that he did what he thought was necessary? Or he acted on the information he had at the time? Would that suffice? But that's what they are claiming. And everyone is just like, what can we do? <laughs> what can we do? It's quite a pity. But you guys out there, let me know your take on this whole situation. Do you think that the excuse of 
reacted on the information we had at the time is a good excuse or should it even be said out loud? Considering the fact that millions of people died for a no just cause. Let us know in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And also, please don't forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because little did of good we, like the one you're doing just now, help us a lot and we shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that. And like always, see you in the next one.